This passage six, it's a conflicts passage. We know it's conflicts because it's student one, student two. It's usually going to say student or scientist, maybe hypothesis or method. It's usually student or scientist. And you're comparing different hypotheses. When they have students, I think these are generally easier to process. But there's usually three or four students, which is more information to process. For the DRC approach, C stands for conflicts, and that's carefully read. I find for most students, it's better if they spend more time in the passage, then the questions are easier. This is the, there's only one conflicts passage per test, and you treat it like a reading passage. So if you remember, your goal is not to answer every question, but to maximize correct answers. So for some students, if you are a weaker reader, or a weaker test taker that doesn't have time to finish, you might want to skip the complex passage altogether. Use your time on the other passages. Your first step is to identify the conflict, and that's usually the last paragraph of the introduction. Sometimes that's all it is, is a short explanation of what's the conflict. Here, they're telling us the Crooks radiometer is a sealed glass bulb from which the air has been removed. And it has this nice picture of it, the air is removed. And the spindles spin uh, when, a, when they encounter light. So, but what's the conflict? That's the explanation. The conflict, four students each provide an explanation for rotation. So rotation explanation and predict the clockwise or counterclockwise rotations. So that's the conflict. Why does it happen? And what direction do the spindles rotate? Your next step is to identify the differences. And we're looking for two things, remember, the explanation and the rotation. So you're going to break down what each student believes, looking in particular for the explanation and the rotation. So student one, photons exert a greater force when they absorb by material than when they were reflected by material. So photons play some role. The force is weaker than air resistance. So photons don't have enough force by themselves to do anything. That only when enough air has been removed from the bulb can they have an impact. So photons are hitting the spindles and that's causing them to move. That's the explanation. They're absorbed only by the black side of the vein, exerting a stronger force on that side that causes the vein to rotate clockwise. So clockwise rotation is gonna put a number one there. So number one has clockwise rotation. The brighter the light, when the CR is placed, the more photons are absorbed and the faster the veins rotate. So more light equals more photons. Now, you could draw on the diagram they give you. This is my drawing, the actual test. So I just did photons, had a little arrow pointing towards the B, the black side. I said air is greater than photons, right? So it takes more force. They do clockwise rotation, and this is my light symbol, more light equals fast. Some students also find that just doing a table helps them. Explanation, direction, other. So B absorbs photon force, direction clockwise, other light equals faster. Number two, student one is correct, except that photons exert a greater force than were reflected than when they are absorbed. So reflection other than resorbed. They are reflected by the silver side, exerting a force that causes counterclockwise. So my drawing, and then I have more light equals more photons faster. That's the same thing, right? Student one is correct. And then my drawing is this, right? Silver reflected by silver counterclockwise. And I just remember that everything else in student one is correct. Student three, the forces exerted by photons are too weak to cause rotation of the veins. This is different than student one and two. Even when most of the air has been removed, photons absorbed by the black side cause heat. So they still hit the spindles, but the heat is, is the main force, not just the photons of light. So the air molecules produce enough air pressure to rotate it clockwise, so clockwise, student three. And then the brighter the air, the greater the temp, I mean, the brighter the light, the greater the temperature difference. So more light creates more heat, so it still rotates faster. So this is my drawing, just photons hitting the black side, 
clockwise rotation. I put a little plus there. I don't know if you can see it. That plus means the air is greater than the photons. It needs the heat and temperature still equals faster. Again, you might have a table that helps you to understand it better. Do what works best for you. Student four, student three is correct, except the, the heat moves from the black side to the silver side, has a counterclockwise rotation. So counterclockwise is the main difference. So my drawing, I just changed the B to an S and the counterclockwise. So uh, that's the main difference. And then a table again might help you. So if we put all four together, student one and student two are similar in that the photons, the light itself is causing the rotation. It's just the, the direction is different. One absorbs light, one reflects light, and it causes a greater strength. Student three and four are similar in that heat is what causes the rotation, but one has the heat focused on the black side, causing a clockwise rotation. The other has the heat moving to the silver side, causing a counterclockwise rotation. Then we have our table if we need it. So you should take about three to four minutes to read the passage and then another three to four minutes to answer the question. You have a little less than seven minutes to do this entire passage, but I find the questions are generally faster if you understand the reading on this passage. Number 20, based on the explanation by student one, which the following plots shows the predicted relationship between the brightness of light. So that's the x-axis and the rotational speed. So we know just from our reading and understanding that more light equals faster rotation. We can see it there. We can see it in our chart. So more light, faster rotation. Choice G. And that's a fast question if you understood the reading. Number 21, regardless of which student might be correct. For the CR to function as described, which of the following statements about the glass bulb must be accurate? Prevent light from entering? No. Choice B, allow light to enter? Absolutely. The light in student one, the photons cause the rotation. Student two, photons cause the rotation. Student three, the light generates heat. And student four, the light generates heat. So the light has to be able to enter. So the, the jar would have to be clear. The bulb would have to be clear. So B. In 22, we have thermal transpiration in italics. Anytime you see italicized words in the question, it's new information. So gas molecules move from a cooler area to a warmer area. That's thermal transpiration, cool to warm. Is thermal transpiration more likely occurring in the process described by student three or student four? Well, we know just looking at the questions, we can eliminate choice G and H, I mean G and J, because they say the cooler black side, which the black side is what's absorbing the heat. So we can eliminate G and J. Then we got to say, well, which one is correct? Well, it even says in the reading, molecules moves from the cooler silver side to the warmer black side. So F, it just explains it directly in the reading. Number 23 is a supposed question where you have to add information to extend your knowledge. So suppose the set of veins in the CR shown in the diagram, so the veins are these little things that are causing it to move, have a mass of M. So it doesn't matter what the mass is, let's call it two. Further, suppose the students obtain a CR identical, except the new one has a mass of 10 times M. So 10 times two, now it's 20. If both are placed in the same light, which is more likely to rotate faster? Well, we know from our reading that the force of air is greater than the, the force of the photons, generally, for, particularly in student three and four. So it is going, the bigger, the vein, the heavier the vein, it's more difficult to rotate. So choice A, a little bit of science reasoning, science knowledge there. Number 24 is a supposed question again. You have to extend your knowledge a bit. So suppose the silver sides of the veins have been painted white instead of silver, yet the CR is still rotated. Would this finding be consistent with the explanation given by student two? So the knowledge here is that silver and white are not that different in how they absorb heat. Black will still absorb more heat than silver and white. And so it is consistent because the black side would have still been warmer. So F. Another supposed question. When a photon is reflected by a surface, it exerts twice as much force as when it is absorbed. This is consistent with which student, one or two? 
We know student two is the one who said it reflects off the silver, so it's gonna be student two. And student two, two choice D says that greater force is exerted on the silver side of the veins, so D. 26, consider the statement, the brighter the light in which the CR is placed, the greater the kinetic energy of its veins. This statement is consistent with which the students. We know that more light equals faster rotation in all of them, so faster is more kinetic energy, so J, all four students. So for the reporting categories for the complex passage, you'll notice that most of the questions are EMI, evaluations of models, and that's where they usually fall in this particular type of passage. So if you're good at reading and processing data, do this passage first, if you're not, maybe save it for last and skip it. Reach out if you have any questions at all. We'll end with our silly joke. What is blue and not very heavy? Light blue. <laughs> have a good day.